a friend in need. Promised a tank engine works helping on the line which led to the iron works. He was thinking about his new friend, Jack. I hope he's doing well today, Thomas thought to himself. Yesterday, Jack had broken the rules and had ended up in disgrace. The pack was widening the road beneath the old quarry bridge, which was on the line which Thomas was on. Jack and Alfie were loading Max with soil. Work had never been so much fun for them. By the time Max was loaded with soil, he roared away. Jack felt very pleased with himself. He had worked hard and followed all the rules. But he was still worried that Miss Jenny still wouldn't let him stay. Ned was ro loading rocks for Monty. Ned has a big bucket and a big heart. Sometimes it's a little too full. Careful, Bumble Bucket, Monty fumed crossly. Sorry about that, said Ned cheerfully. Thomas was hardly waiting to get to the old bridge. He knew that the pack was working there, and he could see that Jack was working hard. Meanwhile, at the site, the foreman called out, Oliver, the top soil needs moving now on the other side of the bridge, he said. I'll take care of it, said Jack. Jack, Alfie called out. But it was no use. Jack went under the bridge. He was about to fill up his bucket and set off to work when he realized something. He remembered Miss Jenny's warning after the incident at the quarry yesterday. Don't jump in where you don't belong. Oliver then rolled up to him. Oliver, this is your job, not mine, said Jack. You can go in and take the soil. Thank you, said Oliver politely. Well done, Jack, Kelly called. Yes, indeed, said Alfie. Well done, Jack, said Isabella. Jack beamed proudly to himself. Later, Ned had to go under the bridge. His operator had told him to lower his crane arm. I must be careful, I must be careful, I must be careful, said Ned cautiously to himself, but then there was trouble. His crane arm had accidentally knocked over the, the keystones on the bridge, and the bridge started to crumble. Thomas steamed towards the bridge, unaware of the danger up ahead. Jack heard him coming. Thomas, he cried. Jack jumped in and lifted his arm. He pushed with all his might. Thomas saw the flagman up ahead. He tried to apply his brakes, but it was too late. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas, frantically. Jack didn't let go of the bridge. At last, Thomas got off, just in time. Jack, hold on, Kelly called, and he raced to the rescue. But Jack couldn't hold the bridge much longer. And as he let go, the bridge collapsed. Are you all right, Jack? Kelly called. Um, 
I think so, said Jack. That night, Jack was brought back to the yards by Thomas, and Miss Jenny came to see him. Jack was worried that he would be cross. After all, he had jumped in and jammed his arm. But Miss Jenny was proud with Jack. Spot on, Jack, he, she said. You make a mother proud. And a tank engine grateful, said Thomas. If it weren't for you, there would have been a nasty accident. Tomorrow, added Miss Jenny, you shall go to the works to get your front mended. And you shall get to join the pack too. The pack can't have a, a front low they in bad condition. You mean I can stay, said Jack excitedly. I wouldn't have it any other way, said Miss Jenny. We're a cracking crew, said Kelly. And on the better of Jack being here, said Isabella. Welcome to the pack, Jack, added Elfie. Jack was so proud he couldn't think of anything to say. So he just moved his bucket up and down. Thomas then set it off back to the sheds. And he felt grateful that Jack was on the pack. Yes, welcome to the pack, Jack, Thomas said. By the time he was mended, Jack now kept him Now knows about Miss Jenny's warning to not jump in where he doesn't belong. So although between you and me, you might have some more fun again, but I'm not sure if you will, do you?